Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Mm-hmm. I am Jen Bopre, and I will be your host again this evening. Welcome to Manitoba Arts Network's third of five digital creation swaps. Uh, we're really glad you could be here. Hopefully, you've tuned in to the ones previously. Um, Manitoba Arts Network connects, showcases, and promotes visual and performing artists with communities around Manitoba. So thanks for joining us to make to shine a, a spotlight on the arts here tonight. I'm now going to read the land acknowledgments. The Manitoba Arts Network and our members live and work on Treaty 1, 2, 3, and 5 territories. We acknowledge and appreciate the past, present, and future generations of the... Huh, I just practiced this. Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree... OG Cree, Dakota, Dene peoples, and the Métis Nation, as well as the Inuit people who have a strong community here in Manitoba. As a part of Manitoba Art Network's dynamic online programming aimed at overcoming the barriers of the current pandemic to consistently provide access to the arts, the digital creation swap was created. And I'm just going to tell you about it. What happens is the coolest thing. Manitoba Arts Network pairs a visual artist with a a musical artist. And what they do is have each of the two parties send the other person three pieces. So So Amy tonight is our musical artist. She will have provided three songs to Kathy, who is our visual artist. Each of them will observe and be inspired by those pieces. Choose one. Potentially one, I I believe. I chose one when I did it. And with that inspiration, create an entirely new piece, which is such a cool thing. Such a cool thing. Such a wonderful way to be inspired. We would like to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for funding this series of five digital creation swaps. As I said, tonight is our third of five. The artists have created their pieces, recorded their videos, and are ready to showcase them to you tonight, followed by a live Q&A with both artists. I'd like to introduce Kathy Ugrin and Amy Bishop quickly before their videos. Kathy is a Manitoba-based fabric artist whose work is characterized by rich and inventive use of color and unique approach to geometrical design. In 2012, her work, I Know Where the Summer Goes, was accepted as a part of the O Canada exhibit, which toured for four months across the United States. Very cool. Her work has been in national juried shows, and her pieces have reached a broad audience and have found homes across Canada, the United States, England, Finland, Italy, Peru, and Slovenia. And... You know, before I move on, uh, is there anything you would like to share with us, Kathy, that you have a c- upcoming or anything anything in addition to that bio? Mm, I'm a part of the Textile and Fiber Artists of Manitoba, and we have a, three exhibits, uh, one of which is um, part of the Man Online Gallery, and the other two, we're just waiting for the galleries to open, and otherwise teaching and presentations and things like that. So there's a gallery people can observe right now, online. Right on the Matto Arts Network uh, website, it's called their online gallery. And our exhibit Manitoba Moments is on there. And I have two pieces in that. Well, girl, that is way cool. Make sure everybody checks that out. Let me introduce Amy now. Amy Bishop's voice is a combination of smooth pavement, pavement and rough gravel, which it really is. That is I, when I read that, I just loved that. <laughs> Uh, She can charm listeners with her sweet tones, yet stun audiences with her ability to hit high notes. Hailing from Calgary, Amy began her music career around campfires, at block parties, and in church choir. Her passion for music has led her to collaborate with Moby and opening for April Wine, Farmer's Daughter, and Chris Cummings. Amy wowed Canada with her appearance on CTV's The Launch in 2018. This opened up industry doors as she was quickly signed by both a booking agency and management company. Is there anything, Amy, you would like to add to your bio? No, that pretty much covers it, I think. That's it. That's all. I yeah. mean, I, I'm working on a new record. I, I, I received a grant this year, so hopefully hopefully, at some point in 2021, there'll be a new record out. Love that. Yeah. Love that. 
Okay, well, I think we are ready to watch Kathy's video. Yeah, Kathy's video, let's see. I'm bad at being in love And I'm bad at being alone Lost when I find myself Without somebody's arms to call home I need someone to make me feel valued Then I feel like I'm never enough I wander the world half empty Hoping someone will just fill my cup Oh, I'm perfect and broken as hell Within the pearl Hopeful and hopeless Fucked up Beautiful girl Laughter and weeping Stillness and the storm I'm perfect And broken I'm learning to bend with the wind And not let the wind knock me down Determined to stand in the wildest squall Hands in the heavens, feet on the ground Cause I barely tapped into my strength It's been locked up in anger and strife But I am beauty and beast I am famine and feast and the love I've been searching for all of my life Cause I am perfect and broken as hand within the pearl I'm hopeful and hopeless, fucked up, beautiful girl and after weeping, the stillness and the storm And within the pearl Hopeful and hopeless Fucked up Beautiful girl Laughter and weeping Stillness and the storm I'm perfect And broken And perfect And broken <sighs> Ladies, I'm dead. <laughs> wow. I'm dead. That was the coolest thing. And I, ah, I'm just at a loss. It's so very, very cool. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to move on, but I have a lot to say and a lot to ask. Absolutely. Congratulations, Kathy. That's beautiful. Amy, Amy, um, Beauty and Beast, Famine and Feast, girl. Mm. 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 <laughs> okay, okay, well, let's move, let's move. I want to now present the piece that, what am I presenting? The piece that Amy was inspired by, that Kathy created. So can we see that? And, oh, very lovely. And Kathy, perhaps, do you want to just tell us a little something, something about that beauty? So that's called Into the Light. And it was created in response to my mom being diagnosed with um, mental health issues. Um, I needed to get some control over something. Um, it was devastating and hard on the family and just so difficult. So I thought there's 
nothing more controlled than sewing two inch squares together. Um, <laughs> So I pulled all those colors and I just constantly moved from a place of darkness to a place of light. And by the time it was all done, I had felt some healing had occurred. Oh, well, how, what a beautiful place to create from. And the piece is beautiful. And I am dying to hear what Amy, Amy created in inspiration to this piece. And what, before you play the video, I just want to say that these artists have not seen each other's work tonight. I should, I should add that. They haven't seen each other's work tonight. So they're seeing it for the first time along with all of you. So go ahead. Let's see. Let's see. Let's hear. disappoint that Amazing. did not disappoint it oh so lovely so lovely well i have so many questions um <laughs> where to start why don't we start with you kathy um amy that was beautiful amy that was absolutely beautiful thank you um is one of your influences jane sibbery um no not really i mean i, I enjoy her but I, I haven't listened to a lot of her so 
Okay, well, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you about your influences in a sec. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, Kathy, could you tell us about, firstly, just explain the, the physics, if you will. What did we see you create? Physically, what did we watch? You watched steps. Not everything, but steps in creating this this piece, this um, perfect and broken um, that just came from inspiration of the song because it that's really what happened was I, I listened to Amy's piece sort of day in and day out and I was kind of like blue sky thinking, pulling all these ideas out and I, I was starting to get into um, a rut, like the same kind of thinking and it was just like time to step back time to trust it's the scariest thing of all for an artist but that's what I did and then I just woke up one day and thought there has to be sky the the stanza that came that sort of pulled me in the most was hands in the heavens feet on the ground mm-hmm. and then I just knew there had to be sky I had these two gorgeous pieces of fabric and then I started pulling in lots of different pieces from my stash realized the colors that I had to go on and knew there had to be broken boxes, fractured boxes. That's what I was going to ask. There was several, like so many pieces of fabric in each of those. Yeah. I just like no rhyme or reason. Um, and, and the other thing that I really loved, um, about the video was there was one scene near the beginning where Amy had her hand on her heart. I was trying so hard to make one of those boxes, looked like a hand on a heart. It just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so it's like, okay. And then when I was doing the back, it was not wide enough. It's like, oh, really? But I found an extra strip, so I knew I could do an inset, and I thought, I'm going to make a hand on a heart on the back. So, Absolutely beautiful. So I, I'm going to continue in asking you, when you listened to Amy's piece, you, you gave us a little bit of an insight into your process. You felt sky, you felt blue, you felt sky. Um, as you listened and decided what to create, can you tell us a little bit more about how you, did you incorporate her song or did you incorporate the way her song made you feel or how did you move? That's where my problem came was I think I was uh, putting much too much of what I thought into it. And then when I let go and I just listened openly, then that's when I knew what to do. That's so interesting how sometimes we create what we think we're supposed to instead of what we actually do. That's interesting that even a visual artist, do you relate to that, Amy? Yes, absolutely. I, <laughs> um, for sure. I, you know, to, instead of being the to, vessel. Yeah. Yeah. Like you want to just be the where the you know where the transmission comes through and sometimes uh for I, I received the three pieces from kathy and there was one that was this beautiful bridge with one red uh stepping uh a slab of wood i guess would be we, we would step on it right so it was this beautiful bridge and that's the one that i wanted to write about and it was you know the crossing and and i had all these ideas and all this fear what if this is not what what it's about what if oh it's... i know i like will you let her down will she will yeah, she not absolutely. really i know i know and then a couple days later she actually sent explanations as to each what each of those pieces was about and i actually felt very connected to the story behind mm-hmm. her into the light so you had to shift yeah because i was putting too much pressure on on trying to think about what what are what's kathy going to feel about this mm-hmm. i as know opposed i to, thought I thought so much about that myself. You don't want to disappoint them and you also don't want to trample on their story. But it's yeah. very interesting listening to you guys because having done it myself and done an, another set of artists, it's it's even more apparent to me that you're allowed, each of you would be happy for each of you to be inspired however you were. But mm-hmm. we, we, we still go in this space where, yeah, we want to put some of ourselves into it, but tenderly and carefully because as an artist we really just want to hold the other person in such you know we just want to hold them in such standard and esteem as well so that's so beautiful that because I heard it from both of you I heard Mm -hmm. it from both of you well I wanted to honor what Kathy what Kathy created well you both did you both did so can you tell us 
how you took inspiration from the piece that you ended up choosing and arriving with such absolutely beautiful lyrics. Beautiful lyrics. Um, when, I, when I read the story behind that piece, I connected to it. I feel like each of us, um, uh, well, I know for myself, I struggle with, with depression uh, occasionally, especially this year feeling this up and down this ebb and flow of uh of sadness and so um i connected with that part of myself you know it feels like an endless journey sometimes and uh whether it be through depression or health or there's it it, it doesn't ever seem to end you take two steps forward and one step back or eight t- steps back and then there's still this drive to move forward there's still a drive to go step into the light, even if that means you end up falling again. And you know, there's that old adage of it's not uh, it's not the amount of times you fall down is the amount of times you get up. That's kind of what life feels like to me sometimes. And I wanted to put that into the song. You know, here's what I'm feeling, but I still have this drive to move forward, to step into the light. Mm, yeah, it was such beautiful poetry and melody. Um, Kathy, can I ask you how you felt um, listening to the new piece Amy created inspired by your work? And specifically, how did you how, how do you feel about the fact that she wanted to make sure it honored your story and it honored? Yeah, tell us all about how it was watching, how, how it felt. Well, of course, I'm a visual person. And I love watching Amy play and I love watching Amy sing. So I'm, I'm glad that was in there. Um, and I, I love that like emotional sort of folky, melodic. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that that's the way it sounded. That's what I wanted so, so much um, to have that sort of thing to connect to. And Honestly, those words, if you were to read the artist statement for this piece and know my experience of what our family went through and what I went through, it, it's exactly that. It just was like, oh, this is, this is my experience. Um, this is my experience being understood. So, so do you no. think this is a piece that you would, would like to share with your family? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love the poem and i would love to listen to it like many many a million times, times right yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> like i hope you record it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah do you think you will i probably will it probably won't be on this next record i like to i like to perform the songs for a couple years before i before i record them but oh, uh, god i've never even thought about that <laughs> amazing amazing cool um but uh yeah for sure it'll probably end up on you know the next one down the line just uh you know i I want i want to feel it has to i want it to feel natural singing when i when i'm recording it Mm -hmm. and sometimes a newer song doesn't doesn't have that yet oh god Uh, duly noted um that's that's cool that's really interesting interesting to see that part of your process can you tell us what it felt like to watch uh, Kathy's video. What do you think about the piece she created, and how does it relate to to your song in your heart and in your artist mind? It's beautiful. Oh my gosh! Oh, and, and I was uh, I, at first I was confused. I was you know I didn't know what I was watching, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden it came together, and it's like this this perfection with all these little broken pieces that are each very perfect in mm-hmm. their brokenness. And I was like you know because each little piece with all of its many pieces inside it's like exactly if it's what my feelings look like almost you know that's so beautiful that's you know that's kind of what it felt like it's like here's this perfect place where where uh, we exist with all these perfect imperfect things existing within it It it's beautiful and then when i when i saw the backside of it uh, my heart just (gasps) you know with the hand on the heart i'm like that was such a surprise and just beautiful it blew me away. Yeah, it was breathtaking. Um, out of curiosity, Kathy, when you created those boxes, if, if, am, I, am I this dense? I apologize. Was that your literal interpretation is making those imperfect? Like was, is yes. that? Yes. I wanted to show how beautiful they were, that they were broken, but they were, they were beautiful. 
And you purposely said that when you chose those colors, you didn't really choose them. You sort of just moved through them and just went with yeah. it. I just had a big pile. It was like, nope, yes, nope, yes, nope, yes, yes, yes. That's cool. Sorry, should I have put that together sooner? I apologize if that was really <laughs> obvious. Um, actually, that might bring us back to... Uh, it might be nice to watch the videos again. Would that be cool with you ladies? Mm -hmm. All right, let's 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 pull Kathy's up again. I I think I have to... Yeah, I, I need to... It's very overwhelming, right? There's a lot to take in because part of you is, is trying to understand just what you said, Amy. Like, what am I seeing? What... Yeah. What is the process? So sometimes I get distracted from even what the project, like the final piece, because I'm like, what is she cutting? What is she sewing? So let's have Kathy's one more time, please. I'm bad at being in love. And I'm bad at being alone. Lost when I find myself without somebody's arms to call home. I need someone to make me feel valued. Then I feel like I'm never enough. I wander the world half empty, hoping someone will just fill my cup. Oh, I'm perfect and Broken the tabs within the pearl. Hopeful and hopeless, fucked up, beautiful girl. Laughter and weeping, stillness and the storm. me down, determined to stand in the wildest squall, hands in the heavens, feet on the ground, cause I barely tapped into my strength, it's been locked up in anger and strife, but I am beauty and beast, I am famine and feast, and the love I've been searching for all of my life, cause I am Perfect and broken the sand within the pearl. I'm hopeful and hopeless, fucked up, beautiful girl. Laughter weeping, the stillness and the storm. I'm perfect and broken. Hello? Uh, okay, question. What are the white, when you put the white squares, are you just essentially holding space? The white squares are actually partially holding space, but they're wool. So when you put the fabric pieces on top, it makes them nice and puffy. Oh, you knew that, didn't you, Amy? No, I, I was oh, wondering okay. the same thing. I was wondering the same thing. Okay, and, and then the... the... Oh, go on. I was just going to say the material itself, the blue material itself, when you near the end, when you kind of zoomed in on all the 
the different blues kind of fading into each other. How did that come to be? Is that just a beautiful piece of fabric you found that you sourced? And like, what is that? That is a beautiful piece of fabric by a fabric designer named Jennifer Sampu called from her sky um, line. And I just happened to have bought some in the summer that I loved. And once I realized that we needed to have sky, it's like, oh, well, there you go. That's why I bought it. So this is like a three artist collab. It mm -hmm. is. It's a three artist collab. Yeah. How and cool. I say the one part where I'm like doing all the pinning and it seems to be going on forever. And <laughs> to me, like Amy's song is a lot about a journey, I think. And that to me is that's the journey and it's going on and it's going on and it's going on and you get to the end and you've got this beautiful thing. Love that. And we didn't get to see you actually take the piece of fabric and then suddenly it was a blanket, right? There must have been like a giant step in the middle that made the piece of fabric into a blanket or am I crazy? Well, you saw quite a few stages. That's <laughs> Well, I just felt like it was a sheet and then it was a blanket. Well, when she was zooming into the blues there, they, it seemed like there was the more details, stitching. The sewing and details, yeah. Yeah, and the stitching kind of looked like it was representing clouds, but without the shifting color. Well, I guess if I don't yeah. see her doing this, I guess I'm surprised. <laughs> um, but absolutely beautiful and clearly a massive, it's big, isn't it? It's right here. It's 40 by 60. Yeah, it's really it big. It's as, as colorful because of the lighting, but it's. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to see it in person, Amy? Yeah, I wish I would. Yeah. I sure would. Will it be on display anywhere, Kathy? Y yes, it's actually going into the Creatory Auxiliary Gallery in March. Fingers crossed. Hey. Um, and it's gonna. I'm gonna take it to the the shop. It's called the Design Wall in Winnipeg, where I bought the fabric, and she's gonna hang it in her window. Oh, how cool! Nice. How cool. That's I love it. Like, I, I just, I love it. I'm very proud of it. So it's, you yeah. love the piece you created. Amy, do you love, do you love your new song? Does it feel authentic and as, as a piece of the body of your work that, that feels like you? It does. It does very much, especially the, the new music I've been writing over the last few years, which is a lot more introspective, um, like, like, uh, perfect and broken. It's, it's showing a deeper part of who I am. Um, and it's really as vulnerable, uh, hey? yeah, and as as I perform it, and it'll change and morph into something even more. Even I think more. someone was kind of saying that in the comments. I I might be misunderstanding their question, but do you think that through the recording process, it also would grow? Is kind of what they were saying. Yeah, like the performing of it over the next year or so will will help help it to grow. You know, something, little things will change, little nuances, or maybe a, a lyrical change here, or maybe a bridge will be built in, or, you know, as as time, it'll, as time goes on. And that's one of the reasons I, I mean, I haven't recorded anything, any original music for about six years. Whoa! Because, well, one, budget, but... Uh, oh, I'm not <laughs> woeing anything other than, like, that's going to feel great. Yeah, but, and so these songs that are, are getting ready to, to be recorded are road worn songs they've they've lived a life and are now in that, that mature stage where they can be where i feel like okay these are I ready own they're, this. This, they're yeah. not little baby birds that are so <laughs> fragile anymore you know it, and then I, I suppose that's what this song feels more like a, a little baby bird that is fragile and i just want to make sure that i tend to it and let it grow oh well, you're making me feel guilty for wanting to just hop in the studio every time I pencil something. Well, um, no, some people are the, <laughs> you, you, you're, you, you might be that 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 kind of a writer where I think once it's written, it's written. But well, for me, once I write it, it morphs and morphs and morphs until it's totally. It, it absolutely morphs. I mean, after you record a song, even mm -hmm. you know, you listen after you record a song, you listen four years later, and you're like, oh, I don't do it like that anymore. Yeah, there are songs that I recorded. Let's say in 2002, I'm like, I would just like to redo this whole record. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. What the funny thing is, listeners though are like, no, this is totally how it goes. I'm like, well, it's not really what I would do now, but this is how it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, why don't we take a look at take a look and listen at your piece one more time? Oh, okay. Let's do it.
Amy, um, did I hear the, t the phrase secret sadness? Secret sadness, secret shame. So when you wrote lyrics such as those, <laughs> were you now moving into your own story a bit, or were you still referencing her, or like a amalgamation? I think it's just like the... When I... When I especially writing this song, I try and get a feeling. You know, like, what, what, does, it, what does that feel like? And then I describe what it feels like to me because I can't describe what it feels like to somebody else. So it is about my own journey, even though it was inspired by her artwork. Okay, you know, there so... is that secret sadness that, you know, like in the first verse where it says, um, sorrow washing over a broken levee, trying so hard to keep it back all the time. And there it is just sloshing over the side, mm. you know? And so especially in, a, in this world, in this society that we live in, um, being unhappy or feeling depressed or sad is something that you want to keep secret. Yeah, you hide it. Yeah. Yeah, we and go so, on social media and post a happy photo. Absolutely. But it's sloshing over for sure, right? It's sloshing yeah. over the edges of the screen. Yeah, where generally if I'm having moments like that, I just don't post anything. Totally. Yeah, ditto. <laughs> Girl, ditto. So I just disappear for a little while. Mm, so with... You, with a piece of artwork provided by Kathy, it is not, like, there's no objects or people or anything in it. So when you went to write these lyrics, I mean, it sounds like you were very inspired by the write-up. Do you think your art would have been very different had you not had access to any of those write-ups? Absolutely. What do you think we'd have gotten then? I think you would have gotten a piece about the, the, the bridge, that the, the, the one, what, what is it called, Kathy, the one with the bridge? Um, endless time, endless time. So, and I didn't know the names of them either. And so I would, it was, it was, um, in my mind, it was going to be about the crossing. 
Okay, so crossing from one side to another. So you mean you mean dying? No, to be just a a transformation. Okay, okay, okay. So so it could be, but it it would have gone. It could have been about death. It could have been about a transformation in your life. It could have been about any any sort of transformation. It still would have been, I think, poetic. And and well, you you write like that. Actually, listening to your writing gives me a lot of permission. I I work with pop music a lot, and hearing music that is so real that it doesn't care what if it's what's trending is so refreshing and is so inspiring as another songwriter. I'm like, it's oh, probably yeah, helpful just... that I'm not even aware of what is trending. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> you know what? What is trending just sort of lucked into what is trending sometimes. I'm be, I'm yeah. paying you. I'm saying like truly thank you. It is so refreshing oh, to hear someone you're, you're say welcome. poetry and say things that matter without worrying. Without worrying, it's just really beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take one more weird esoteric question here. With this particular piece. If this was the only piece you were presented with, and this is what you had to be inspired by, without a write-up, what do you think we'd have got? Oh. It would probably have been about hopeful. It, it would so have it been, would have been very different. It would have been very different. It would have been hopeful, um, as opposed to, as opposed to, um, because the write-up inspired me more than the, I mean, the artwork itself is beautiful, but the, you know, it was the write-up that may, helped me to choose that piece. I love it. Um, because it would have been, it would have been hopeful because of all those darks and then it opens up to the bright and then it's, totally. you know, and then at the top there, it's a little darkness and a little, a little lightness. And so it would have been uh, a more of a hopeful song. But that would have been interesting. Again, I'm kind of going down a weird path right now, but that would have been interesting because Kathy, you know what, that piece was created from and for and to for yourself. Do you think that would have been interesting had she come out with this beautiful, hopeful piece um, inspired by it? Do you think that would have still felt lovely and authentic? That's why I love making abstract art so much because you just take what you need from it. And um, I mean, it came from like an authentic place and it was something I needed and, you know, it reflects what was going on there. But it, it's open for interpretation. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. Hopeful. It's very hopeful. Yes. I mean, we lived with, we lived with hope and, you know, we were able to get to the light and yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, I shouldn't even, your song wasn't not hopeful. Amy. No, it is. I mean, it's hopeful or if, if, if hopeful is not the right word, I would say it is about that the journey it, it's, it's about perseverance. Mm-hmm. regardless which is of hopeful, which is yeah. totally hopeful yeah yeah it's just not cheery <laughs> yeah okay okay i'm just trying to make sure i'm not missing anybody's anything um kathy is this the first time you have created a piece uh taking inspiration from music and do you often listen to music while creating no i've created other pieces inspired by music have you really i have actually one is for your last musician rain hamilton Oh, um, interesting. He probably doesn't even remember she's getting it one of these days. Um, and also, I've created a piece inspired by one of the pieces by J.P. Ho, which is also being exhibited right now. And I did a bunch of collaborative work with the Cluster Festival. So that's more of a new music type um, of um, genre of music. But I've done collaborative work with them, too. And I, you know, I... I have my music that I love. Like, I don't really like dance music and that type of thing, but I, the music I love, I, I love it. It, it feeds me. It, it touches me. And I love to sing to it. I love to harmonize. Um, Carl, you're an art hero. You, you're, you've got a lot going and you've explored a lot of these things. Um, That's very cool. Can you tell us actually, I've never thought to ask this to a visual artist. So thank you to whoever posed this question, perhaps Heidi. Um, what are your inspirations? I'm going to ask you after, Amy, but, but what are your, who have you taken influence or, or inspiration from? Um, the people that I love. And um, I, to me, it's I'm speaking my emotions. I can't always just feel comfortable in like with my voice speaking what I feel um but with fiber and that work that's what I'm doing is it it is my voice and um I am 
I, I love to share what I'm feeling. I absorb what's around me. I I am a grateful person, and so, but but my family for sure, friends. Love that. Sure. Love that. And Amy, I'm trying to guess your influences, and I've known you long enough that I should <laughs> I should know. But uh, who are your? Is it like Katie Lang? I don't even know. You know, I started listening to Katie Lang when I was 12. Okay, my so father I gave one. me. Um, vocally, she's an inspiration for sure. I, that's who I, when I was younger, I wanted to sing like Katie Lang. Um, but as far as writings, uh, I love Mary Chapin Carpenter. That I, feels right. Yeah. Yeah. Cheryl Wheeler. Um, Gretchen Peters. You I know, I, is. oh, look them up there. They're incredible uh, songwriters. Gretchen Peters wrote Independence Day that Martina McBride did. Yep, I know that one. Yep. In, in the late 90s or early 90s. And just incredible, incredible songwriters. And I, I like songwriters that make me feel, you know, I want to feel something. Um, James Taylor, you know, mm. and I don't know if I, like, when I sit down, I'm like, I want, I, I, I put myself in them, you know, if I want to write a song that I want to write a Mary Chapin Carpenter song. I put myself in the in the sense of how I feel when I'm listening to her, and I haven't succeeded yet in writing a song that's like one of my my inspirations. But it's a good way to start the writing process. I mean, for me. you're a very special artist. You're a very special artist. As a matter of fact, did you play East Cooley Spring Festival? I have yes years ago. Yeah, so. I, I'm not saying that we're not the same age because maybe we're the same age, but when I, I was younger, so. <laughs> I definitely saw you on stage when I was younger and I remember huh. thinking that's a real artist. Like that is someone, Aww. that is who I want to be when I grow up. You know, I remember you, Wow. you know, I remember seeing you and um, it's really neat to, to have this opportunity to speak with you today. You're, you're legit. You're a legit writer and singer. Yeah, very cool. Thank you wanna, so much. Yeah, absolutely. I want to make sure I'm still touching what people are talking about. Um, Jill, Kathy, when you created your work, you said you didn't want to use your story, but Amy's story. Um, is, is she assuming correctly there? Um, what I wanted to do was kind of in, allow what I felt the message was and what was coming from Amy but still interpret it so that um, the piece was authentic, like my voice was in there too. But I didn't want to be pushing in what I think thought was being said. And I still wanted Amy's, what, what I felt was Amy's intention. Um, so kind of both parts. You two really wanted to honor each other. I, the artist that I work with, we had a chat on the phone very early on. And um, she's like, I don't know, like I'm afraid I'm going to, I don't know how to how to do this or what the rules are. And I said to her, girl, there are no rules. I said, I don't think it matters if you draw from my story, your story, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you smell when you look at it. It's funny, you two are a, a lot more like what is here and I'm going to work with exactly what the intent, like intention of the original artist was a little bit more, I think, than than we did it's really neat it's really neat to see how differently this project can be interpreted and as i've said every time everybody listening this project is amazing don't you ladies agree wasn't this oh, so yeah. fun yes and i think for when i was when i was uh writing the song that for that was inspired by kathy's artwork i wasn't thinking uh, it was more like i wasn't so concerned you know i was i was inspired by the story behind it you know i could have written another a different song but i was so inspired by that because it's like that's there's truth there it resonated you know it, it, it resonated honestly resonated yeah, yeah there was there was a truth there that i felt that i had the experience and the words to share that truth uh, you guys are such a great pairing and i just so you know i don't know if you've looked but several people have said that in the comment <laughs> section what a great what what great individual artists you are and what a what a wonderful collaboration and pairing you both were and i agree how cool um da, 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 what else am i missing um do either of you have anything else that you want to share about your career your pieces how you felt about this um participating in this project is there anything else either of you would like to share that i might have missed i'm so grateful that 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 this you know, once when COVID came and we were all like, okay, well, I guess we're not touring this year. I'm so grateful that Manitoba Arts came up with this idea to keep us 
in in our artists minds I know. you know i you know i'm finding it harder and harder as this year lags on to stay creative some people have found it easy and they could just continue to be creative i'm finding it god to bless be difficult. them it was hard yeah i i was really daunted by this project but took it because i knew it would be good exercise mm -hmm. but it turned out it was better medicine than i really understood way mm -hmm. better medicine i was even mad at it for a minute i've said that a few <laughs> times everybody thinks i'm a jerk i was a little mad at it because i'm like how am i supposed to cr like i can barely write a song when the mood strikes let alone like on a deadline with the thing like i don't know about you kathy maybe visual artists work on deadlines more but musicians were like i'll do it tomorrow like yeah so i was like how am i supposed to have a deadline but it was so beautiful to have a piece realized that i was proud of and that was connected with another artist so do you work on deadlines usually oh yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> See. in my other life i was a nurse oh and we didn't have deadlines we just we did our thing we worked hard and all that and then when i started um to do more artistic things and get like way deeper into the fiber art world it, it's like whoa like these deadlines are a killer. I think um, she might have experienced some of the musician's deadline thing when, you know, hey, Amy, I just sent you the questions three weeks ago. Um, you want to send me the questions? Monday. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know like, it was just like... <laughs> all, all of the visual artists have been more organized than the musicians. Just to be clear with everybody out there, <laughs> the visual artists have their shit together and then us musicians are like, I'm here. Yeah. I've, I've composed something. <laughs> Um, I just know how long my process is. So mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, no. Um, you know, I asked Kathy a question on Monday, and I thought the answer was so incredible. I, I'd like to ask it if that's okay. Yeah. Um, as a musician, I write a song, even if it's a commission. Once that song is written, I get to keep it because it lives here, it lives here, it lives within me and on the airwaves or wherever it ends up. But when you, when you create a project, and you sell it, it's gone. How does that feel as an artist? It, for me, it's, it's fine. You know, I've, I've done it, I've created it, and I'm able to, to share it. Is that what I said? What did yeah. I say? You, well, you spoke about how you, you, once you've created it, you're ready to let it go, yeah. but also you have limited space to keep your, yes. to keep your artwork. So, you're happy to let it go. One, the only one that I had difficulty with. So this piece into the light I created um, when my mom was diagnosed and then she, you know, lived for quite a while after that. And then she passed away. And when she passed away, I felt a huge feeling of freedom and release. So ah. a year after she passed away, I made another piece that was um, quite similar in size. Um, it was called Bird's Eye. It had lots of birds through it. It was also, I loved it. And it sold a lot faster than I thought it would. And, you know, when the woman bought it, it was like, oh. But I, I felt as though it was going to the place that it needed to go. She was a physician and, um, yeah, I was, I was happy that it went with her. But that, that was the only piece that I've ever been like, eh, not yet. But. How interesting. <laughs> yeah, I never thought really about that, Amy. But as a as a side note, um, the artist that created a piece to my song, I've now bought for my friend who I wrote the song about. Super crazy full circle. And I w it was really neat to see it in person. I got to be honest. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just reviewing your guys' questions for each other. And it turns out I've been a bit shit. I don't think I've actually <laughs> done a great job of hitting what you guys actually wanted to talk about. Um, Amy, I'm just going to quickly ask you a couple of Kathy's questions okay. here. Um, when, after you've made a piece, after you've written a piece, how do you decide how to take it? I'm, I'm in, extrapolating here, Kathy. How do you decide how to instrument that song? Like guitar, piano, like how, how do you know what vibe you're going to actually take into the studio with it? Um... Because I play guitar, I always just come up with a way to play with guitar. I have um, incredible bandmates. I have a band called The Hopeless Sinners, and they know me. And so when I bring a song to them, they th their interpretation is usually something that I fall in love with immediately. So it's and then it grows as we as we perform it for years. And uh, 
And so it's it really just starts out with me and my guitar, la la la, and then I carry it to them. And you know, usually Lisa, my bass player, will come in with a line, and then all of a sudden the drummer's in, and next thing you know, we've we've performed it. You know, and it just sort of grows. Um, there's never really any until I get to the studio. There's never really any big thought about. It's a big How organic. Do I want this to go. It's big very organic, organic and it grows, and then it's like wait, I'd like to stop and do this here now. And and then it changes sometimes with a with a stop, let's try it again. But most of the time it just sort of grows and it's organic and until it's created and still it's, you know, grown into whatever it, it becomes. You're big organic vibes all over. Okay, so when you're writing, do you do you sit down and kind of start to finish a song? Like I begin, middle, end, done? Or do you like days and weeks pass? Um, with this particular song, it was about a five day thing and I have to be in the mood. I have to feel this little itch. It's usually an itch somewhere in here. I have to feel an itch. <laughs> Physically? There it is. Well, it's, 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 it's not outside itch, it's inside and it feels like this, this itch, this urge I need to write. And then I'll sit with it and I'll write until the very moment when I think I'm done today. Yeah. And then I don't force it. Because every time I've forced a song, it ends up never being a song I perform or keep. Or sometimes, yeah, that's for sure. Or you sit and you write a bunch of lyrics or you push it because you just want to be done verse two. And then at the end, you're like, I'll just try verse two tomorrow. I shouldn't have wasted yeah. my... Uh, so, yeah. uh, you know, it could be an hour. It could be six hours that I'm sitting with my guitar. And it's usually, when I start writing, it usually starts with my guitar. What do I feel like playing right now? And then the lyrics will come. It's very it's odd for me to have an idea of what I want to write about. It's more about what mood am I in? I pick up the guitar, I start playing that mood, and then the song comes. Oh. And then as soon as I think, I don't want to do this anymore today, I have to put my guitar down. Otherwise, I'm forcing. And I if I force it, it never, ever, it, it's never something that I'm fully satisfied with. I totally get that. I totally wow. get that. Well, Kathy, um, I think we we had some of Amy's questions answered just by watching your video. She wanted to know, do you stitch it all by hand? We definitely saw a sewing machine very early on in your video. So we know that. And do you dye your own fabrics? We know that. Actually, do you ever do that? We know the piece you bought from the, the artist, but do you ever dye fabrics? I have way too much store-bought fabric sitting here that I have to use up because once I go down that path, there's no coming back. <laughs> so I will be dyeing my own fabric in the future, but I, I got a little bit of stuff to go through first. Love. Love that. Um, but we love, we love that you will be dyeing fabrics. We can't wait to see the skies you create. Mm -hmm. um, do you stitch by hand? How does that? Da -da? Oh, yeah. I guess, I don't think we asked Kathy how, maybe we did. Did you tell us why you ended up choosing the specific song you did as opposed to the like all three you were given? I, okay, I liked all three of them, but the third one to me, like I said, it was a journey, but to me it is like, almost like an identity statement. And it takes a lot of courage and a lot of self-love and a lot of insight to make such like a, a, a proclamation about yourself. That saying, here I am, you know, this is good, this is bad, I think I'm great. And to get to the end of the road and the world is in front of you and there you are. And mm -hmm. right away, as soon as I heard that, I, to me, that's what it was about. And I was, I hadn't even heard the whole thing and I was harmonizing to it already. So I just knew <laughs> that, you know, I needed to, I needed to have that song as part of my life. Love it. Well, you can guest on the record in 2022. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, ladies, I think I'm going to wrap up unless I've missed anything. Please both feel free to, to say anything else you want to say. But you're, you're both such beautiful, beautiful artists. Amy, such a beautiful poet and vocalist. Kathy, Thank you. I don't know anybody that does what you do. It's very beautiful. Uh, very beautiful. And I know for a lot of people, um, we don't get to see artists process. We just see stuff in museums and we just see stuff in galleries. So very cool. Thank you for the video. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, both for sharing sharing all this with with me and with us tonight so just honor both of you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much yes thank yeah. you cheers what to a great both experience of yeah i know wasn't it well, i hope they do it again thank you guys i'm gonna wrap bye guys <laughs>